Today we're going to be talking about complex numbers. You can see that it says part one. That's because, yes, there is a part two. And that's tomorrow, obviously. Now, tonight's homework is homework number five. Okay. And it specifically goes along with complex numbers part one. Tomorrow's homework would be homework number six, specifically goes to complex numbers part two. On Monday, I'm going to give you an extra credit opportunity. The extra credit opportunity is a bunch of complex number practice. It's not a whiteboard day, it's not a practice day, it's a day where I'm going to give you a sheet that is nothing but practicing that stuff. So if you don't turn in uh, homework numbers five and six, which is tonight and tomorrow nights, until Tuesday of next week, I would understand because maybe that's because you were going to use Monday, which is a practice day, as a day to ask me lots of questions should you have them. And that's okay. <clears throat> but that is so far away that I fear that if I don't mark it missing, you'll just forget that you had to do it. So um, I guess the expectation, what I'm getting at here is that the expectation is that homework number five would be turned in tomorrow and homework number six would be turned in Monday. If they don't come in, then I will mark them as missing, but have no fear. Like I said, if you were using Monday as a day where you're just like, oh man, I just had a million questions. I got to get those answered before I do that homework because I want the homework to be done right, not just done because what's the point in doing it if it's wrong? I would understand is all I'm saying. So someone please let text in. All right. So complex numbers, part one. A complex number is a number that is made up of a real part, which is the A part, and an imaginary part, which is the BI. Remember, the little I stands for the imaginary unit. Just going to remind you that what I equals, because, you know, it's important. Reminding you that I is how we denote the square root of negative 1. You see, the square root of negative 1 is the numeric value of I. This is what I equals. So yeah, if you put a number in front of i, like 2i or 3i, it means you had two of those square roots of negative 1, or three of those square roots negative 1. That would be called the imaginary component of a complex number. A complex number is made up of a real part and an imaginary part. <clears throat> it's called standard form when the real number, the real part, is written first and the imaginary part is, is written last. All complex number solutions must be written in standard form in order for them to be considered correct. They must be in standard form. So for these first two questions, we've just been told to write each expression in standard form. That means we have to reduce our radicals, combine our like terms, and then make sure that our answer is written in standard form, a plus bi form. Okay, well, Starting off easy, what's the square root of 4? It's 2 plus. Now, that doesn't say the square root of 25. It says the square root of negative 25. So because I'm asking you to take the square root of a negative number, what do you have to have? An i. And what is the square root of 25? 5. So the square root of negative 25 is 5i minus. And then the square root of 16 is just 4. So now we just combine our like terms. We have 2 and negative 4. Those two numbers are like terms. They can be combined. 2 and negative 4 combined to give you negative 2. So this thing has a value of negative 2 plus 5i. That is standard form. Negative 2 plus 5i. Not too bad, right? I'm sorry? Yeah, that's it. So we were just reviewing, could you reduce radicals, and can you combine like terms? So part B. 16 is a perfect square. So what is the square root of negative 16? 4i. Four four I. Good. OK, well, look, 20 is not a perfect square. 20 is not a perfect square, but we can reduce it because there is a perfect square that goes into 20. What is it? 4. 4 goes into 20. So we'll call 20 4 times 5. And then minus, and oh, cool, 9 is a perfect square. 
So what is the square root of negative 9? 3i. And then lastly, square root of 45. Look, 45 is not a perfect square. But there is a perfect square that goes in to 45. It's 9. 9 goes in 5 times. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is reduce my radicals. Square root of 4 gets to come out to the front of that radical. Square root of 4 is 2. 5 is stuck inside. And then last radical, square root of 9 gets to come out. It's 3. Once again, square root of 5 is stuck. Now we combine our like terms. The real numbers, 2 root 5 and 3 root 5, those are like terms. The reason why they're like terms is because they have the same radical. It's like saying 2x plus 3x. 2 dogs plus 3 dogs. They're like terms because the radicals match. Mr. M, what if the radicals don't match? Then they're not like terms and you cannot combine them. The radicals must match. So 2 root 5 plus 3 root 5 is 5 root 5. And now your imaginary components, 4i and negative 3i, well, if I had four things and then I took away three of those things, I'd be left with one of those things. So it's just plus 1i. And there is no reason to say the 1. Again, we were just reducing radicals and combining like terms. That's all we're doing. What's important is that you write it in standard form. Real part plus imaginary part. 5 root 5 plus i. I'll go ahead and tell you, you have a test question that's, that looks just like this. You just reduce a bunch of radicals and combining like terms to make sure your answer is written in standard form. Yes, sir? On the last question? I, these two combined to give me that. And then these two, 4i minus 3i is 1i. Gave me that. Just combining the like terms. And since there, there's not like, you don't have to do opposites or anything like that because you're not moving across an equal sign, you just combine them exactly the way they sit. A positive 4 and a negative 3 is always going to give you a positive 1. It just happens to have an object next to it, an i. Which, remember, equals the square root of negative 1. That is the value of i, square root of negative 1. But that's not bad, is it? Reducing radicals, combining like terms, not too bad. Can we move then? Can we move on? All right. So what we're going to be doing on this slide is we're just going to be performing a bunch of arithmetic with complex numbers. Again, combining like terms and writing your answers in standard form, that's all we're doing. So the very first question, 1 minus 3i plus 7i, your like terms are negative 3i and positive 7i. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. So it's just 1 plus 4i. Fin finished. That's it. Combining like terms. For number two, the reason why I'm using parentheses is because I'm showing you that I am adding two complex numbers. I'm adding the complex number 8 minus i to the complex number 5 plus 4i. So that's why there's parentheses there. It's just so that you can see that this is me adding two complex numbers. But in reality, what you're going to do is you're just going to pretend there's no parentheses and you're going to combine your like terms. And you just make sure that your result is written in standard form. The 8 and the 5 are like terms. 8 plus 5 is 13. And negative 1i plus 4i, negative 1 plus 4 is 3, so plus 3i. That's it. Legitimately. Combining like terms. It's not a trick. It's not difficult. You just do it. If you would like to see another way of doing that, I could have written it like this.
and then you legitimately just add straight down. 8 plus 5, 13. Negative 1 plus 4, 3. Of course, there's an I. And I actually really like that method when there's only two complex numbers. I like it a lot because it will stop people from making mistakes on question like number three. Let me write the number one wrong way of doing this. The most common wrong thing to do is this. And this is absolutely wrong. Of course, doing it this way will get you to an answer that is wrong, and you would find that wrong answer on my test. And you picking that wrong answer would tell me exactly what you are doing wrong as a student. Anybody see what I did wrong? Nick? So what would... Well, you know, the subtraction means I'm subtracting the whole thing, right? Okay, so I am subtracting the three. But what is wrong about what I have up here? Hmm. Yeah, do you see it, Sam? Hmm. Still not quite seeing it, are we? Wait, like, it's negative six five minus so what you're telling me is the minus negative. Yeah, so that'd be a plus. There it is. You see, that has to be a plus sign. Here's why. You're treating this minus sign as a negative one. You're supposed to be saying minus three, and exactly like Sam said, minus negative six i. It's almost as if we're distributing a negative sign. So it has to be minus 3 plus 6i. And that's why I said I, I actually like to stack the numbers because if you stack the numbers, you're less likely to make that mistake. 7 minus 6i, 3 minus 6i, and then you do this. You see, if you stack them, you're much less likely to make that mistake. You go, yeah, I see 7 minus 3, and then neg and exactly what Sam said, negative 6 minus negative 6. Oh, that's negative 6 plus 6. Right? Either way, you get the same answer. You just make sure that you distribute, quote unquote, distribute that negative sign. So we have 7 minus 3, which gives us 4, and then negative 6i plus 6i. Well, that's just 0. 0 i's. 0. Then the answer is just 4. Done. That's it. Because negative 6 anything and positive 6 anything would have canceled out. It's like saying negative 6x and positive 6x. They combine to give you 0. I is just a number. It behaves by the same rules as all other numbers. So four is our answer. Four. There's no reason to say zero I. The room's kind of quiet. It's a little scary. Is this making sense? easy, right? It's almost like we're waiting for the ball to drop. Where does it get difficult, right? Today it doesn't. No tricks here, guys. It's just the hardest thing that you're going to have to do is make sure you distribute a negative sign, like in number four. You have to make sure you distribute that negative sign. So it's minus two, minus seven i. This one doesn't really stack very well because it's in the middle there. So I'm just going to go with distributing the negative sign. So we have 13 minus 2 minus 7i plus 5i. And then you just combine your like terms. Well, hey, I mean, the like terms are sitting next to each other this time. The 13 minus 2 is just 11. And negative 7i plus 5i, well, negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So negative 2i. Finished. That's it. Please don't make this difficult. It should be very, very simple. Distributing a negative sign is the most difficult thing you saw me do, right? It was, correct? Nothing crazy hard yet? Awesome. So then we could just go to the last slide, and we will finish notes remarkably early today, 
you could legitimately probably get your homework finished in class today. One of the reasons why I split into two parts. It says two equations are shown, but in all actuality, it's just two complex numbers. I've given you two complex numbers. The first one, a sub one, and the a sub one is its name. A sub two is a name. So I'm just telling you, the first complex number is three plus five i. And the second complex number is two minus three i. What is the value of the first complex number minus the second complex number plus four? You just, you just plug it in. But you should probably use parentheses to make sure you don't goof it up. What am I talking about? I'm talking about that bad boy right there, that minus sign. So whenever you plug in, how many times have I said this this year? Whenever you substitute, you should probably be using parentheses. So 3 plus 5i minus parentheses 2 minus 3i parentheses plus 4. And see, when you, when you substitute with parentheses, it makes it very obvious that, oh, that's right, I was supposed to distribute a minus sign. There we go. 3 plus 5i minus 2 plus 3i plus 4. And like I said, we're not use, doing any opposites or anything like that because everything's all on the same side. You're not moving across equal signs, so you don't use any opposites. You just combine your like terms. You just go, all right, I have a 3, a minus 2, and a plus 4. 3 minus 2 is 1. Plus 4 is 5. I'm just using the color coding. And then your two like terms are 5i plus 3i. That's just 8i. Boom. There it is. Did that question seem difficult? Yeah, it was pretty easy, right? What about the setup? The way it's written? Kind of confusing, right? I didn't make this question up. I took this question off of what used to be the Algebra 2 end of course exam practice test. This is the kind of stuff that was on the Algebra 2 end of course exam. Was the math difficult? No. Was the way they presented the math difficult? Yes. It was done that way on purpose, just to see who was really understanding material and who was just monkey seeing, monkey doing what their teachers were doing. But it's just substitution with parentheses. As long as you substitute parentheses, as long as you use standard math skills, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's it. That's the whole lesson. Unless there's any questions for me, of course. No? All right. Then we'll stop it there.